Right. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another edition. We've had a couple of requests uh, for this week, so we will touch on some of those things. And I've got some newbies, new things I'd like to show you as well. So let's get started and let's have a look to see what the first one was. Hmm. Ah, this is a very important website. And I'm going to type it in the chat for you so that you can have a look. It's called snopes.com. What is snopes.com? Well, imagine you are reading a Facebook page and someone says, did you hear that Marcel Marceau saved a hundred Holocaust survivors? And you're like, really? Did he really save a hundred survivors? What, what, was he even involved in the Holocaust? I don't even know if the story is true. Or maybe you hear that um, Joe Biden, his mother was a famous ballerina. And you ask yourself, really? I mean, do I believe everything I see on the internet? You shouldn't. But if you want to check to see if it is true, then Snopes.com is your website. They are a fact checking website. So let's go and find Snopes.com and I will give you examples of what they do. And this happens all the time. There was um, a lot of people are posting things on the internet on a regular basis and you don't always know if that stuff is true or not. And here, for example, is when a non-political moment was made political by adding a Biden sticker on the bumper of the car. So you could see that all of a sudden they were using a typical situation and added a little bit of politics to it. People will do that. They add their own additional um, photos, words into pictures to make it look like it was real. So let's find out, is there anything, Felicity, there must have been something that you've heard about or seen on the internet. Is it true or not? I don't know, it could be anything random, anything that you want to test out. Well, I did see a movie about that Marcel Marceau. I uh, did work for the underground as a um, during World War II to help the Jews. Okay, let's see. I can't spell his name correctly, but let's see what it, what I found. Marcel Marceau. Let's see. Let me find out how you spell Marcel Marceau or something like that. And Google will kindly be, ah, that's yeah. the way we spell it. And let's see what they say about him. I don't know if it's in Snopes, but we'll find out. Uh, did Marcel save hundreds of Jewish children from the Nazis? Let's find out. We're now checking the article. This is the claim that the world famous mime artist Marcel Marceau worked with the French underground as a teenager and helped save many Jewish children from death at the hands of the Nazis during World War II, rating true. And then of course they give you a little bit of background in terms of how that can be true. So they will tell you that this is actually a true story. So there we go. He uh, was actually a hero. Are there any other stories that you've heard recently? Maybe not a historical one, but Something that, um, oh, did uh, Mel Brooks pass away? I've heard stories that Mel Brooks passed away. Mel Brooks, let's see what it says. Did the movie Young Frankenstein inspire the title of Aerosmith's Walk This Way? I mean, you get all these funny things. Um, 
No, let's see. Did Carl Reiner pass away? I don't believe he passed away. Let's just have a look there quickly. Um, Carl Reiner died at 98. Is that true? I don't know. Oh, it was true. But this is a different Carl Reiner. It's not the one. Is it the one? Is it? Is it the Carl Reiner that, that I'm thinking of? No, no. He was the creator of the Dick Van Dyke show. So that's not him. No. Let's have a look. Um, I'm having a look to see. Let's just say Mel Brooks died. Maybe that will be a bit more specifics. Let's see. No, Mel Brooks didn't die because it's got nothing over here. So clearly he's still alive as far as I know. Let's find out. Did Mel Brooks die? I thought he had passed away recently. Let's find out. I'm just checking over here. Mel Brooks was born. He's still alive. So there we go. That's why I didn't say anything about him dying. So, you know, you're going to find, you see these posts on the internet all the time. And you want to check, is this actually true or not? And then all of a sudden, you can check it on Snopes.com. So that's not the only website that does a thorough check for you, but it is one of the many that are uh, that have got a very good reputation for being accurate. And I think that that's something that, you know, I see articles on Facebook all the time and I think, oh, that is such a lovely article that this famous person did this and no one knew about it. And then all of a sudden, I mean, did you ever see the, did you ever hear that uh, Anthony Hopkins, so Anthony Hopkins was a composer? The famous actor, was he a composer? Wasn't he a composer? Let's find out actually, because I've seen there are lots of references to Anthony Hopkins being a composer, Anthony Hopkins and let's see. Let's just put here compose. You should actually put the composer. Um, maybe I didn't put it in correctly. Anthony. It was. What is going on now? Oh, now they're trying to sell me things. No, I'm not looking to buy. Uh, let's try that again. We're going to go to Sir Anthony Hopkins Music. Is his name Sir Anthony Hopkins? Now I've got to just check that I've got it right. Anthony Hopkins Music. Let's just see that I've got this right. So I did spell it correctly. And it turns out that it actually is true, but I'm not sure if it's showing up over here. Let's just type in Anthony Hopkins and see what comes up. There was his death hoax. Um, no, it doesn't have an article about it because maybe people haven't uh, been searching for it, so they haven't needed to find out. But if you didn't know, Anthony Hopkins did actually write a classical piece of music. And if you haven't seen the video, uh, he wrote a waltz. Um, and Andre Rich, Andrew Rich, the Dutch composer, um, actually played it. And uh, I will share the link with you because it really is a magnificent uh, piece. There we go. You learn new things all the time. You can enjoy that little video clip. It will absolutely amaze you at what a talented composer Anthony Hopkins is. All right, what is our next tool for today? The next tool is Class Central. 
Now, we've done something similar to this before. I'll just post it in the chat in case you want to check it out. Let me load it up on the screen. And then I can share my screen. Here we go. And it was here. Let's try that again. And share screen. There we go. Class Central basically is like one of the other sites that I've mentioned. If you are looking to learn something, there are many courses that are online, but many of them are free. So if you want to learn something, I'd like to learn Yiddish. Any courses? Mm, nothing coming up there. What about um, Spanish? Do you think they would be teaching Spanish? Let's have a look. Oh, they do have Spanish. Uh, there's a free online course to learn to speak Spanish. They've got Spanish basic, Spanish one. It is self-paced. It's free online. So on the sides over here, they tell you if it is free or if there is a cost. This one says a free trial. So you already know there's going to be a cost to it. This is a free online course. This is a free online course. So you can basically find courses on a range of topics. So let's go and find something besides Spanish. Let's look for something a little bit more. Um, do they have knitting? Would knitting even be considered something that they could teach? Well, this one is Spanish. For $11, you can learn how to crochet. The science and technology of weft and warp knitting. I don't know if that's what you want. Knit maker, that's $29, no thanks. Textile study, that's free. Um, they're not really big on knitting here. Let's look for something creative writing. I'm sure that that would be a popular choice. Creative writing. And if I have a look over here, creative writing. There's a free course, six hours worth of material, and it's four weeks long. You've got the craft of the plot. You've got the craft of the character, the craft of the style. These are all courses. This one over here is paid. Uh, this one over here is the craft of setting and description. That is free. So as you go along, you can see what is going to cost you what is free and it tells you for example this one write a book creative writing uh, skills for beginner writers um how to write a book this one is a free trial uh some of them are free um writer's block so there we go there's quite a few uh in fact there are 220 courses and it only shows you the first 15. So there's no shortage of creative writing courses. So if you're looking to do a short course, I think that that would be something that you would find very helpful. So that was our, what was it called? Classcentral.com. This one over here is interesting to those of you that are readers. If you are a reader and you have an iPad or you have a Kindle, then, and I suppose if you've got a phone, you can download the Kindle app on your phone. You can go to 100 zeros. And let me share my screen to show you what it looks like. 100 zeros lists books that you can read for free on your device. So if you have a look, maybe I suppose you could do a search for, I mean, I don't know if these are all 
top of the pops top 40 books but they will certainly be books that if you are looking to read here for example is sherlock holmes the ultimate collection i don't know what's inside it let's have a look and you'll see it says uh, this will give you the the rundown of what it's all about but apparently from what i understand this website you can actually find the free books. If I type in Sherlock, let's see what comes up. Come on, let's do a search there. I don't know if it's my computer that's slow. Oh, there we go. There are no free eBooks related to Sherlock. Sorry, let's try romance. Anything that comes up? It might take a while to search its database. Probably that's why there is a delay. Let's see if anything comes up. And remember, these are free books to read on your Kindle. Or if you've got an iPad, you can download the Kindle software and you can read them. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of reading digital books. I prefer to have the physical book in my hand. Um, if that's not finding any books, then we go along and browse by subject. So if I look over here under romance, let's see what pops up. There we go. And it does say here, download free books for your Kindle. Um, oh, that's just telling you, these are the romance ones, apparently. Uh, dreams come true. There's lights, camera, marriage. There's pirate bound. There's wicked designs. Oh, they're very um, reminiscent of Bridgerton. Um, I don't know what else is over here. I, I can't even tell you if the books are any good. But you get some people who are voracious readers and will read anything. So if you want to experiment and explore, you can check out 100zeros.com. There might be something there for you. I can't make any promises. All right. Um, and now this one is something that um, I think it was Ed who asked last week if we could revisit. Um, the, there were two things, this Facebook and Skyview. So I'm going to try and join this session. Let's have a look. Okay, I'm in. And I'm going to if Hijiri, if you could just make my other me a co host. Yeah, I'll do that now. No problem. So just go into participants. Yeah. There we go. Uh, let's see which one. I'm at the okay. bottom. I should be at the bottom. Oh, there you are. All good. Right. Apparently, I'm now co-host. That means I can share my screen. Okay. So right now, you can see my screen. I'm going to load up the Skyview app. It's called Skyview Free on Android or Skyview Lights on um, the iPhone. And when you open it up, I'm going to just dismiss the upgrade. The first thing you do is you put your GPS on. And the reason you put your GPS on is because it needs to know where in the world you are. So those little white dots that you are seeing below me on the floor are actually on the other side of Earth. So those are stars. And if I click on it, if I go like this, you'll see on the bottom left-hand corner, it says C-A-F-H, the star in Cassiopeia. But as I start moving up, I start to see all the different stars. So when you see stars at night, you move the little circle around the star and it'll tell you what the star's name is. 
And you'll notice that when I move on to it, it shows a solid line and a dotted line. If I move along, let's just do that. I'm going to click on it. If I move over here, this is where the star was coming from. And that is where the star is moving. So if I'm trying to track the star down, I can see that at 10.30, it's going to be on that side of Earth. That's not going to be any help to me. But I do want to search for things. Where is the International Space Station? So if I click on the needle uh, on top right hand corner, there is a magnifying glass. I click on it and I choose satellites and International Space Station. It's telling me with an arrow where I need to look. So it says you must keep moving this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. Here it is. That is where the International Space Station is on the floor. Now, it's not really on the floor. It's on the other side of Earth. But if I want to know, is it coming anywhere near us? Then I can follow the path over here. Let me click on it. And if I keep following the path, it's going to show me where it is at 10.08 in the morning. But unfortunately, that's not going to help me because that's still on the other side of Earth. So this particular app is very helpful when you are trying to find things. Let's look at the Hubble telescope. Sorry, Steve. Yeah. Is that sky view um, light. light? Yes. Okay. And if I go to Hubble Space Telescope, that's telling me it's under my desk. No, it's still on the other side of, there it is. It's, sorry, it's still on the floor, not helping me. Um, what would happen if I'm looking for, let's go to Nebula and Galaxies. Where's our Milky Way? Yeah, no, Milky Way is also on the floor. Let's try something like our solar system. Where's Mercury? Mercury, we lost it there. Let's try that again. Mercury. Says I must keep going up, 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 up. And it keeps losing the signal. It might be a GPS thing. Let's have a look. There's Mars. There's Mercury over there. So Mercury is up in the sky, but we won't be able to see it because it's maybe a little bit too bright. So when you are looking for things, you can just do the search and you will find it using this app. So there are so many times where people say, oh, look, there is a, a meteor shower, the Pleiades meteor shower. Or people say, did you notice that Mercury and Venus and Mars are all aligned? And you're like, well, where do I look to find it? So you use this app. You can follow the arrows and it'll tell you exactly where to look. And then you know exactly what you are looking at. And sometimes the International Space Station passes over earth and when that happens you want to be able to see it with your own eye and you might think oh it's just a shooting star it's a little dot moving across the sky but i've seen some people zoom in with their cell phones and actually get a photograph of the international space station so it can be done using a cell phone and if you've got binoculars you can certainly see it as well so that was mainly for the people who are interested in astronomy or just want to know you know, when there's another celestial event, you know, how do I identify what that star is? What is that bright thing? Is it a satellite? Is it a star? Is it a shooting star? This will answer your question. Okay. And then finally, there was another request to go back to Facebook and look at Facebook and uh, explore the various parts of it. So, just to remind you, there are two or three reasons why people use Facebook. One, the first reason is to tell everyone what you ate for breakfast, what all your opinions are, and how many awards you have won. That's the one reason people get Facebook, so that you know 
how amazing their life really isn't, but they want you to think it really is. Then the second reason is because you and your family are spread out all over the world and you would love to know updates on what the grandchildren, the cousins, the nephews, everyone is doing. And to communicate with 40 different people is a nightmare. But if it's all in one place, then it's very simple. People will post photographs. You can see things. You can comment. You can uh, send birthday messages. You can tell them, you know, that you just took part in an event and they know what you are doing and everyone is updated on everyone else's life. And then for me, I use it for work purposes. When I first started out, it was purely for personal reasons. I joined it and then I could post, you know, information for the grandparents if they wanted to see photographs of uh, an event that the kids were doing at school. But then I started to realize that actually, I don't want to share all my personal information online. So I stopped sharing all of that and started only using it for work purposes where I share inspirational articles, where I will post events that I'm busy running or I'm involved in so that people can come along and learn more. So we're gonna go onto Facebook and remember the mobile view is slightly different to the computer view. So let's go and load up Facebook. Here we go. And I do apologize if there's anything inappropriate because people share things and this is depending on your friends that you are with. So let's have a look. Share screen. All right, so in Facebook, you've got several features that you need to notice. You've got a search feature here. So if someone has posted something and you're trying to find it, well, you can just type in a search there and find it. Over here, this is your pages. These are pages where people have been posting updates to the pages. This over here is videos that you can watch. This over here is marketplace. And this over here are your groups. Now, what is the difference between a group and a page? A page is basically Let's say I run a business and I post information and adverts and things on my page. I can make the page public and I can make sure that no one is allowed to post on the page except for me. So it really is just an, a, a, um, a billboard for me to advertise on it. Uh, but people can comment if I allow it. And it could be similar to a group in the sense that people can join my page and they can like it. And of course, if they want to post, I can allow them to post as well. A group is more of a gathering of people and it works very similarly to a page, but at the end of the day, it's designed for communication and we can have a look at different kinds. This over here is my Flexing Fridays page, for example. And on this page, um, you will notice that I post any videos and things that I do on a weekly basis where I'm showing ed tech tips. And uh, I often will share any uh, articles that I think are interesting with regards to ed tech, which is educational technology technology that teachers can use in a classroom um, to help them improve their teaching. So I run a thing every Friday afternoon from four o'clock until five o'clock called Flexing Fridays, where I do what I do with you, but I do different apps for educators. And people generally have a look uh, and they can obviously go and find out information with regards to technology. But this is just a page. Of course, then I'm also a member of groups. So what groups am I a member of? Let's pick a group over here and let's see what we come up with. Um, let's see. Here is a group, the Science Communication Africa Group. So it's a public group. 
It's got 3.3 thousand members. And when it says public group, it means that people in the public can see what's posted on this page. And anything of interest to the science communication world, they will obviously post information on it. So let's say, for example, from the rural districts of the Vembi in Limpopo to the urban townships of Soweto to the dusty villages of Tsomo in Eastern Cape, what speaks to a successful mathematics and science education culture? Now, that is an interesting topic. We're going to hear from Professor Aswin, Aswindini Muronga. And this, uh, I think they are the executive dean of science at the Nelson Mandela University. That's happening on the 15th of October at three o'clock. That sounds very interesting. So there is a form there that you can click on if you would like to learn a little bit more about it. So sometimes if you're into science, there are often presentations taking place or events, and you'll know about it through the various forms of science communication on this website. But what I do tell people is that if you are interested in certain things, then Facebook is incredibly useful for you. So let's say, for example, I would like to do something with regards to space. So I type in a Google search for space, and now it's showing me different groups. There's deep space ecology. There's space and astronomy events. Now that sounds interesting. It's a page. Let me look at it. Um, it's an astronomy and space events for professionals and laypersons. So if there are any lectures, all oh, this looks very interesting. They've got some lectures over here. If I look over here, it's got communication astronomy with the public in the age of the global crisis. Um, there, I, I see that it's mainly Indian presenters. So obviously the person that has formed this is probably based out in India. And maybe that's not going to be like what I'm looking for. No, 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 it's got other stuff here. Um, and, and of course, November 2020, this page is not being well maintained because the last thing that I see here was on the 3rd of March. That's not really going to help me. So I'm not going to click liked because if you click that you liked it, it means that every time something is added to that page, you will know about it. So that didn't really help me. What else is there? There's the Space Foundation. And there are 22,000 members that have joined this one. I have liked this one. Um, Space Rocks. Let's see. Uh, Radio Sonder Grenze. Stere and Planeta. They run every week. They have uh, evenings where they talk about space and anything in the space world. And what is interesting is that if my very good friend, uh, Jim Adams from NASA, he is the guest presenter every week on the show and he talks about stuff. So if you are interested, I'm going to be running a session with Jim and a few of the co-presenters on that show. It's taking place on Tuesday, the 5th of October at 7 p.m. South African time. And if you join the list, then you can actually ask questions, anything that you have that is space related. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to secretly share the link with you. Here we go. So if you want to sign up and you are interested in space, you can sign up to the form and we will email you the Zoom link and you can join in. It says here that Jim Adams, the former deputy chief technologist at NASA, is going to be speaking. They've got Billy Quartz, who is at the South African Astronomical Observatory. We've got Dr. Stefan uh, Lotz. He's a researcher at the South African Space Agency. So you're going to have some very interesting speakers. And I'm going to be facilitating the Zoom. So if any of you would like to come along, I think that you might find that particularly interesting. So... 
the one thing I need to say is that, yes, you can now search for groups of things that are interesting to you and click on like or join, whatever it is. And when you do, all of a sudden, all the information that is about that topic, those things start filling up your Facebook feed. So you'll start to see a lot of things over here that are related to stuff that you have actually connected with. Uh, what you'll notice, for example, is uh, these dishes. I saw a post the other day by a lady who said that she always grabs vintage casserole dishes when she sees them at thrift stores. And apparently these ones are worth a fortune. And if you ever remember those designs, it was the Corningware designs. Apparently, you can get them for a couple of thousand rand. They are vintage pieces. So if you still have them in your house, you never know. You could make some money out of it. So some people, for example, they use Facebook purely for entertainment. So they will go through things. And let's say they find a video like this. These guys are absolutely hysterical. They are the just for gags. It's a Canadian group that do like candid camera things. And they, they often get these unsuspecting people. So if I go like this, there we go. They get these unsuspecting people to do crazy things. They ask the person to watch the dog. And the dog's being trained to look at the meats. And she's saying, no, don't do it. But little does she know that this is all part of the plan. And of course, the collar has been designed so that it will break off. <laughs> and then, of course, the car's going to drive away. <laughs> And then, of course, you get your adverts that pop up every now and again. Let's see if I can in that. There we go. So once you get caught up in that video, let's pretend you love that video just for gags. Where was it? It was over. Now I'm not seeing the video. But let's pretend you do like videos like just for gags. Then what you can do is you can go and do a search for just for gags. And hopefully it will load up just for gags. Here we go. And if you click on the page and then you click on follow, then you are following the page. And that means whenever these videos pop up, they will start filling up your uh, Facebook page. And some of these are so hysterically funny that literally... It's embarrassing when you laugh out that loud. People go absolutely crazy and don't understand what you're laughing at. They do the most ridiculous things. <laughs> They've had <laughs> kids driving their drunk parents, but obviously it's the drunk parent who's got, fake drunk parent, of course, who's got the steering wheel on the other side of the car, but people don't know. And, <laughs> and they just do the most ridiculous things and they do it in, in a couple of different countries too, which is really funny. They get kids to do naughty things on a regular basis. They steal the little dog and then they put a fake dog. Oh, some of them are really cruel. <laughs> but at the end of the day, they are there just to keep you entertained. So if you're looking for something funny, the, I mean, this has got 10 million followers. So you can imagine how many people on Facebook are watching their videos. And for them, that's how they generate their income. They play the videos and then obviously they can put adverts in the middle of the video and they generate an income like that. Uh, of course, sometimes uh, you are a member of a group that you have to, let's say, for example, connect. So there's a product called whiteboard.chat, which is one of my favorite teaching tools. And the development team, they are often on this group. So if I say, you know, it'd be really nice if I could, for example, add a picture and then text and what will they do? Boom, they'll go and make it happen. 
and they'll make a posting on the group saying, we've now updated whiteboard.chat. You can now add pictures and a text. So this is what this person said. This is what I see right now. No text showing for navigation tools. Before that happened, I couldn't change the pen color. Uh, they are uh, two very light gray rectangles on the board. Nothing is working. So of course, boom, uh, the, the owner of the whiteboard chat said, why don't you go to reset and it'll remove all your settings, including color, and that will fix the problem. So you get instant feedback from people. Uh, sometimes celebrities have groups and then you want to connect with that celebrity, you can post. So if my friend Katie Coleman, where's Katie Coleman? Here we go. Katie Coleman is a former NASA astronaut and she's got a page that she just started up. She's got 2.7 thousand followers and she's posting quite frequently on her page. Uh, this is my friend Cheyenne. She just came down now from space and I'm hoping to interview her uh, and maybe even Haley as well. Um, I'll hopefully interview these two um, in the next month or so when things, when all the dust settles because they were on the first civilian space uh, trip and they went around Earth three times. They came back on Saturday evening or Sunday morning and um, it was a very successful trip. And I'm sure a lot of people have a lot of questions about it. What was it like being in space for the first time, et cetera, et cetera. But there are lots of articles over here, which I find fascinating. And of course, if you are looking at something like this and you think, well, that'd be really cool. Sometimes you make a comment in the comment over here. And then Katie will comment back. How often do you get an astronaut commenting back? on the things that you say. So sometimes these sorts of um, pages, what they do is they give you access. I can now send a private message to Katie. That is a big deal. It means that now I could say, hi, Katie, loving your page. And I'm looking forward to interviewing you next month. And we could communicate that way. And, and that gives you access to people that you wouldn't normally get a chance to access, which I think is amazing. And then finally, of course, you, uh, a lot of people only use Facebook for this reason here, birthdays. If you want to know whose birthday it is, if they are not a Facebook friend, then does it really matter? No, I'm kidding, of course your friends matter. But if you click over here, it tells you whose birthdays are happening this month. Uh, sorry, this day. So you could go and wish these people each a happy birthday. And everyone is happy because you have remembered their birthday, but actually Facebook reminded you. So a lot of people will use Facebook to remind them of birthdays. But of course, you can form a family group. You can go along to groups over here and you could create a new group. And then you could call it family and make it private so that no one can see what you put in that group. And when you do that, then you can have your American family, you can have your Australian family, you can have your whatever family, and you can have your own private groups and share. You can have a group for the seniors and only post things in the seat. What? You do have one? Let's find out. CJSA. Oh, look, the CJSA have got a page. So basically, they are posting announcements. And you can send an email. They've got an email address and a phone number here. And things that are happening. And of course, you can also comment on the page if you want to. The only issue really is that, of course, uh, is it public? It might be private, I don't know, but there are 711 people that are following this page. And of course, if they post updates here, you can always check the page and get the latest updates. And what normally happens is when there's an update to any page that you follow, or someone comments on something that you've said, on the top right-hand corner, 
you will see where it says notifications. If you click on that, you will see any new information that has popped up. So over here, for example, it says uh, there are birthdays today. So that's a nice reminder. Um, my friend Charmaine posted a photo about something. Uh, there are some memories. One of the ways that Facebook keeps you engaged is it reminds you of something that you posted on this day last year or the year before or the year before because they want you to go back to that and then share it again because that's how you keep the, move, the machine moving. When there's constant activity, then they know that you are still out there and that's what they want to encourage. Um, and then, of course, you can respond to people's comments. So, for example, over here, Emma is a friend of mine from Sweden, and she was actually doing a presentation for 400 teachers, and she asked a colleague of mine, uh, a teacher who we call the Digigogo. I call her the Digigogo. She is um, a retired school principal, but she is very, very up there when it comes to IT. In fact, if anything, she's probably more organized than I am. And she often gets to connect with teachers around the world. And we have this mutual friend, uh, Emma, and she called Putty, and Putty obviously spoke uh, to all these teachers over there live, over Zoom or Skype, whatever it may, may have been. But then the next day I was asked to join in as well. So I typed in, I recall having the privilege of doing a session with you too. And then I see there's a heart next to it. And I see that Putty, she showed a heart to say that she loved that comment. So what happens is that not only do you get to make a comment, you can also, if you move the mouse cursor over the like button and hold it there, you can choose a different emotion um, emoji or emoticon. You could put sad, you could put love, you could put funny, ha ha ha, you could say I care, you could say I like it, or maybe you are angry, or maybe you are surprised. So let's do that. We're going to find one at CJSA. Here we go. And we're going to respond. Uh, what an amazing Yom Kippur. We're going to like it with a heart. There we go. So now we've left. No, 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 no. I want to change that. I want to put it a like. No, actually. No, I shouldn't put angry. I shouldn't put sad. I could put surprised. So you can determine how you want your emoji to be when you click on like. Just hold it over like for a second. And then this will pop up and you can choose. And I wouldn't be surprised if they don't start adding new emojis over the next few years, just to keep people on their toes. They like to make sure that uh, they give you uh, emojis that are more expressive. Um, if there was a, a Jewish emoji, there could be guilt uh, that maybe a grandparent could pass on to the child. Like the child will say, oh, um, it was so nice seeing my granny this week and then granny can write down something like um yes once in a year how amazing and then put the guilty emoji there and then that will certainly spur the grandchildren to come and visit a little bit more often because they got the guilt emoji so you can decide how you want to communicate but at the end of the day you know facebook does have settings that you can protect your personal information. You can make sure that only your friends see your posts, not the public, but it comes with a caveat. Remember, whenever you get onto the internet and you sign up for something, Facebook is free, but it's not really free because you are the commodity that they are selling. They want you to see what you like, because now they know that someone like you in your age of, let's say, between 20 and, and 35, and, and that's about the average age over here in this group, if you take this particular group of between 20 and 35, they will look at all the things that you like, and they can start to build a profile about you. 
So then they know what sort of adverts to flash on your screen. And that way they can generate uh, a better income from the advertisers because they are sending adverts that are targeted towards you and not just a generic advert that goes to everyone. So Facebook, yes, if you're willing to part with a little bit of your privacy, um, it can be an incredible tool. I will go on Facebook, see a wonderful talk or see something amazing that's just happened and go, I need to interview that person. And then I go and make contact with the person and say, would you be willing to do an interview? They say, yes, boom, I've set up an interview. That was amazing. There've been times where it's just, I don't know, ridiculous laughter, watching just for gags for an hour until your stomach muscles hurt. It might be that you want to watch animal. Oh, some people are very big animal supporters. And um, there are a couple of amazing pages where they show animal rescues. And if that's your thing, you could certainly enjoy that. And as I said, if you're into technology, space, um, design, knitting, whatever it is, I bet you there are groups on knitting. Let's just have a look here. Uh, I'm going to share my screen quickly. If I was looking for knitting, let's have a look at the groups that they've got. There are knitting techniques. These are five minute crafts. Uh, these are just videos. These are not groups. There's, yeah, the groups crochet and knitting. This one's got 249,000 members. They do 360 posts a day. This over here is Knitty Bee, knitting tutorials for beginners. Let's have a look. Free crochet and knitting patterns group, 77,000 members. So if you join the group, let's just have a look at it. If you join the group, just click on join group. It's public. It, anyone can see this group and it's visible. And if you have a look, they've got Jeanette who's showing you a quick little video on how to do certain things. And people have responded with little videos like this. And of course, you might think, nah, that's not really my kind of thing. Oh, that's not too bad. That looks like uh, the cover for a bottle of wine. Um, and then, of course, you get these very elaborate ones as well. So you're going to choose the things. And let's say you see something that you like. You can go along and click on subscribe to the video channel. You can go along over here, click on the video channel and learn how to make these things. If you have a look at the details, that really is fantastic. I wouldn't put a glass on that one because the glass might fall over if you've got a little thing sticking out on your coasters there. So those are, I don't know if those are coasters. Maybe they're just decorations for plates. That would make sense for a plate, but I wouldn't go and put a glass on there. So you can find pretty much anything you like if you go and search for the group and you'll be able to join that group and literally spend hours and hours learning new things, connecting with people who are also interested in what you do. And then all of a sudden, it leads to wonderful communication as well. So that was Facebook in a rather in-depth look. There are many more features of Facebook. But today, I just wanted to give you a sense of why Facebook could be of use to you. Are there any questions? Um, yeah. Yes, Simone. Could you could you explain how you say I get a photograph on WhatsApp, and I want to put it on the Facebook group? Uh, is it a simple method? Do I just click what and kind of pay? what kind of phone have uh, phone have you got? Samsung. Okay, so you've got an Android phone. All right, so let's do that. I'm going to go to share my screen. Right. Uh, I'm going to look to see if I've got a photograph. Um, let's go to gallery. I'm going to pick. Uh, ha. I made a cheesecake last week, and now I want to share it. So if you look on the bottom of the screen, you'll notice that there are a few different things. Share, favorite, edit, delete, and then three dots. If I click on share, 
Where do I want to share it? I want Facebook. to share it to my Facebook feed. So if I click on Facebook, do I want to say anything about it? This is my cheesecake. There we go. And I can click post and it'll post it to my Facebook feed. Maybe I didn't want to do that. I wanted more than one thing. So I'm going to click on this picture, go to share, but then I'm going to scroll through and I'm going to pick one or two other pictures as well. So now I've chosen three pictures and it puts all three of them in. Does that make sense? You, you, you uh, hit the Facebook um, icon. Yeah. But how do you select a particular group on Facebook? Ah, I see what you're saying. This one says on the top, share to my news feed. I might be able to click on that and go share in a group. Yeah, that's it. That's what I want to know. Is that yeah. what you're looking for? Yes. Okay. So that should solve your problem. Yes. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Yes, Estelle, you, you can unmute yourself. My, unmute yourself. My, mine's the opposite way. If I see something on Facebook and I see it and I want to share it on WhatsApp, I don't want to put it back on Facebook. I, I, I copy it and it goes to the clipboard. But how do you get it off the clipboard, that particular item? I'm glad you asked that question. Let's go to share screen. So let's pretend I'm in Facebook and I see a picture. Let's pick something. I'm just going to find a, a, a random picture. This one over here. Okay. I've clicked on the actual picture. Now you wanted to do what? You want to send it in WhatsApp? Yes, it wasn't a picture, it was an article, but it doesn't matter. It's the okay, same thing. Article. I want to send it in WhatsApp. Okay, so let's choose an article. I know we need to find an article because that way it, it will help you. Uh, here's an article. My Modern Mets. This one. I'm going to click on it. What kind of phone have you got, Estelle? You unmute at the moment. Okay, I've got a Samsung. Okay, you've got an Android. That's great. So one thing that I've done is I've chosen the article. And if I click on the three dots, it says share. So let's go to share. Do I want to copy the link of the article? Or do I want to share it? in messenger which is you know facebook messenger so do i want to share it with the person or do you want to actually i'm going to go to more options do i want to send it in whatsapp so i can go along click on whatsapp type the person's name there's diana and i can share the article with diana so let's do that again i get my article i click on the article to open it Top right hand corner, three dots. I click on those three dots. I then choose share. It's going to ask me, do you want to copy the link? So I can copy the link on a clipboard if I want to. And then I can paste that anywhere else I want to. Uh, do you want to share it in a new post on your Facebook page? Do you want to share it in Facebook Messenger? or you can go to more options. And when you go to more options, click on that, you just choose WhatsApp and you should be able to share it via WhatsApp. Does that make sense? Thank you, yes, thank you. Wonderful. I'm so glad we can sort these things out. Uh, while I'm here, actually, this is a good point to show you 
if you did happen to click on the article and you happen to click on the three dots and you happen to go to share and then go to copy link. Now the link is on my clipboard. How do I get that link? If I went into WhatsApp and I go to Diana, how do I put that link in? Here's the trick. You hold your finger down. So where it says message, you hold your finger down and then lift up and it'll say paste. And you can actually paste the article. A lot of people don't always know that. So for example, let's say I want to delete what I've just typed in over here for Diana. If I double tap that whole thing, it says, do you want to open, cut, copy, or paste? I want to cut it. If I want to paste, I hold my finger down on the white space and I lift up and I can click on paste. So copy, cut, and paste you can actually do. So let me do another one for you like this. Um, let's open up a, a, an email. I want to copy this particular link. What do I do? I hold my finger down on the writing. But you can see that there are two little blue bubbles. So what I do is I drag the left bubble to the left. I drag the blue bubble down to the bottom. And now that I've copied that, well, I've selected it, sorry. On the top, can you still see that says copy, share, select all? It's just below the word link. Above, uh, just above the blue writing, I click on copy and that disappears. And it's now copied that to the uh, clipboard. I then go back into the Zoom call uh, where was the Zoom call? Here we go. I go into the chats. And if I hold my finger down and then let go, paste. And look what I just did. I pasted it. So that's how you copy, cut, and paste using your cell phone. And I thought some of you might find that useful because there are times where you need to copy a number or a something. And you manage to copy it, but you just don't know how to put it anywhere. So now you know that if you hold your finger down, you can actually paste it as well. Any other questions? Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any topics you want me to cover for next week? If there are any burning things that you want me to cover, let me know. I will certainly make a note of that. And uh, if there are things that maybe it's not computer related, maybe it's technology related. Maybe you're just trying to work Netflix on your TV, or maybe you're trying to do something like, um, how do you connect a TV up to, to um, DSTV or I don't know, anything technical, you let me know what it is and we'll find a way to show you how it's done. And if that's it, then we will see you all next week. Have a super duper pooper scooper week. And Thank don't you. forget, you can always let Hijira know if there's anything else um, or, or Diana, and I'll be glad to explain these things to you. Thank you very much, Steve. Thanks for your time. Thank You're you welcome. everybody for coming. Okay. And all, joy support. Thank you. Be Thank well. you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Sorry. Bye -bye. Somebody, did somebody ask me something? No. Oh, I thought I heard my name. <laughs> waving, waving. All right. All right.